60 bay can fit in standard one meter rack and the 90 bay can fit in 1.2 meter rack. The system is fully serviceable design. The chassis stay in the rack with the pull out drawer for customer to hot swap the hard drives and service the expander module in the front. There are 15 drives per row while Sikki Bay has four rows and the Nighty Bay has six rows. Each drive base support hot swap or 2.5 inch SATA drive or 2.5 SSD. The system support either Broadcom Duo 3616 IT mode HBA or Duo 3108 hardware race SAS controller. In the rear, the bottom node is the motherboard slab, which is also a serviceable and modular design. It supports dual Intel uh, scalable CPU with a cascade refresh up to 205 watts TDP. So UPI seeking Dean 29, 2933 MHz ECC memory, GP Express expansion slot available, 2 by 16 and 1 by 8, as well as on board dual tank gigabit Ethernet. On top of the multiple slab is the multiple IOS expansion slab with two real hot swap to five inch drive for OS mirroring and four optional MVA U.2 drive for storage tiering. The next is the Duno storage, the twin architecture. These are two servers sharing the stand chassis. The top and bottom nodes are identical and fully independent to each other. Each node control half of the drive base, which means a storage server in half of the 4U manages 30 drive in 60 bay and 45 drives in 90 bay storage. Each node support either two internal slim SSD or two startup nodes, as well as to MBIE M.2 storage for OS boot devices. In the meantime, as you can see from the real view, which is the real six set of hot swappable controller, uh, counter rotate, fan module, and special L4 cooling design, the Duno 90 bay system can support up to 205 watts CPUs per node. The high density storage server also equipped with the highest computing power. The third is the high availability SPB storage, very similar to the Duno storage, except for the shared storage with an internal node-to-node connections through NTP and IPMI. This is the fully node redundant design, and in case one of the node fail, you can easily swap out the node for replacement without shutting down the entire system. These two nodes are able to access all the drive at the same time. The high availability SBB architecture is to eliminate the single point of failure for mission critical applications. The last model is the JBA expansion. The enclosure is similar to the SBB architecture, but we just swap out the multiple select with the JBA select. Each JBA select contains IPMI for remote power on off and remote monitoring, SCAS enclosure services over BMC support, which is able to check hard drive status and support firmware update to IPMI. Each JBAS led have 24 external SAS port for uplink to the host and the downlink to the cascade to the next JBAS. Like the server node, the expander and hard drives are field replaceable as well. We have a single expander and dual expander skill available. Here, I would like to emphasize the few service port optimized. The new tableau storage is designed to enhance the few service ability on active component through the modular few replacement unit. The passive VPRAN and hard drive backprint without active components are designed to achieve no single point of failure. It's a tourist modular design for all the fuel replacement units, such as the hot swap and tourist 3.5 drive slab with the built in 2.5 inch drive adapter, hot swap or service bow expander module with a tourist latch design. Hot swap 1 plus 1 without.
the drawer to our design features an internal cable management model and auto latch for easy service and become more secure. The new top loading architecture enables the unified design with four configurations. Send their single node, high performance due node, high availability SVP node, and JBA expansion. First, the new due node configuration send the top loading storage from the cold storage to warm storage workload. And due node has doubled the computing and the IO bandwidth. Second, the Duno SVB high availability plus JBAR configuration, it provides enterprise redundant features and eliminate any single point of failure. It could support mission critical high capacity workload. With this new flexible architecture, the next gen top load storage enable a variety of software defined storage license and no or rack level for torrents design. The new top loading storage deliver agile, scalable, and cost-effective storage platforms for software-defined data center use. Overall, Supermicro foil top loading storage provide many great advantages from economic point of view. Cloud-scale top loading storage provide high capacity and high density in foil system to improve the overall TCO and operation efficiency. From an architecture point of view, cloud scale top loading storage provides single node for cold storage workload, do node for one storage use case, and SBB for mission critical high availability. Enterprise storage is essential building blocks for the software defined storage. From operations point of view, cloud scale top loading storage provides no single point of failure designed with hard swap and serviceable modular features is ready to deploy into the next generation data center. Thanks everyone. So this box is actually Supermicro's next generation 60 bay top loading storage server. Now, the reason that you do top loading storage is because it's pretty easy to service. You can get a lot of density in for you of rack space. And so this is kind of cool. There's a couple things on this so you can actually slide this out. There's four rows of 15 drives each. And inside here, there's a whole cable management arm. And that cable management arm means that it's internal. All the cables manage to stay nice and safe while you pull in and out this drive tray. And because of that, you don't need a drive management arm in the back. You don't need to move the server. The server part of this and the motherboard stays nice and safe in the back. All cables are connected, yet you can move the drives in and out to service them. And in this generation, all of the active components, like even these SAS expanders, are hot swappable, so you can easily service them with a single person in the data center. And since these top loading storage arrays are actually really heavy, what we have is the motherboard and I.O. assembly from these. Now in the back, there are power supplies and fans that are hot swappable, but this is actually the hot swappable motherboard and I.O. assembly. And what you can see here is you can see things like you have M.2 storage, you have toolless I.O. trays. And inside here, we actually have second generation Intel's the unscalable processors, and there are a total of 16 DIMM slots, so you can use Intel Optane DCPMM if you want to put some of that in the storage solution. And as you can kind of clearly see, you can actually remove this entire section without having to remove all the drives or the whole chassis from the rack. And what that means is that if you don't have as many people operationally to be able to service machines, you can send a single person out, they can pull this assembly, and they can work on all the different parts of the server itself, put it on a workbench and go fix things, upgrade things, whatever they want to do, without having to move this giant heavy chassis out of the rack. Hey, and Paul, you're the product manager for these, right? Correct. And can you give us some idea just in terms of, you know, who are the typical customers for this type of solution? I mean, there's a lot of different storage solutions out there. So for these top loaders, who are the big customers for those? So again, the big customers would be guys doing object storage. Uh, again, there's many, many uh, hyperscale type uh, applications where they need a very large footprint of storage and this is a perfect uh, system for them. Because of its modularity, we actually can put this into almost any enterprise on-premise uh, 
or in the cloud. Because again, this is modular, it has flexible node configurations. So if someone just wants to do backup and they, and they have an on-premise installation, they would be able to use this as a very large backup target. So again, that's, that's the typical customer is either doing backup or they're doing something that's very large scale object storage. And so or in terms of op applications, are those really just object storage or backup or are there other, you know, what kind of software people are using with these? And so the, it, it, again, for the most part, it is capacity driven, but uh, because we have this, this configuration uh, with multiple nodes, we can do applications like Lustre and high performance computing with parallel file systems because we'll have a, a high availability version with dual, uh, dual nodes. using dual okay. port devices. So really, um, in, in terms of creating a, a data lake for uh, AI workloads or just traditional oil and gas uh, luster environments, this is gonna be the de facto standard. This time, I'm gonna uh, turn everyone's attention to a storage solution overview. Um, the first one I wanna talk about is our operating system certification uh, program. So uh, the first, First one I want to mention is SUSE, and this is a very popular um, operating uh, platform for telecom communications as well as semiconductor vertical industries. Uh, the next one I want to mention is uh, Ubuntu Canonical OS certification. This is a primarily a dominant um, platform, software platforms for uh, artificial intelligence, machine learnings as well as deep learning. So all the NVIDIA development frameworks are all based on Ubuntu, and that's why it's advantageous for us to offer that OS certification. Going up next, I want to talk about scale up and scale out storage solutions. The first one I want to mention is um, Nexenta Store with Supermicro's uh, storage platform. So Nexenta Store is a, uh, a block and a unified file storage applications. Um, it's a scaled up solution uh, versus the next one I'm going to mention is called SUSE Ceph. It's a scaled out storage solution. It's a SDS, software defined storage solution powered by open source Ceph. And SUSE offered the subscription services and support services. Going up next, I want to talk about our Supermicro famous uh, NVMe storage solutions. And most of these are uh, based on 1U, 2U, and 4U NVMe storage platform solutions. So uh, the one we are offering is a scale out solution it's called Accelero. It uh, basically unify uh, all the physical boxes uh, based on our NVMe storage uh, platform into one single logical unit provides customer with a one cohesive, one logical solution platform with high IOPS, low latency, and very, very fast all flash applications. Next one, I want to mention about our container application as well. Our 4U, 2U, and 1U um, storage platform also support a container uh, Kubernetes applications. We support a container in the AI application as well. In the example of Canonical and Ubuntu, we also support the traditional uh, CAA, CAAS container as a service platform. Next one, uh, as I mentioned previously, AI and machine learning solution is also a Supermicro a strong suit in our 4U GPU platforms and 2U GPU platforms. My team um, provides uh, GPU skills uh, benchmarking as well as our uh, GPU platforms uh, benchmarking in the area of inferencing and training with the uh, development framework like TensorFlows, uh, PyTorch, and Chainers. So um, Supermicro uh, are very, very strong in terms of world penetration on that applications. The last one uh, I want to talk about is our custom storage enclosure design. This is very beneficial for customer who wants a uh, custom flavor of expanders, storage back, backplanes, and custom AOCs, the work rate controllers to reflect customers' uh, um, custom designs. On the next slide, I want to first I want to talk about our scale up solution. 
This is powered by Supermicro Nixenta DDN's uh, scale up solution. So the basic uh, premises for the scale up reference architecture in this slide is two controllers. So top controllers, what we call head nodes, are the brains of the storage boxes. These are the active active storage controllers that provides high availability, one plus one redundancy control of our storage boxes. The bottom one is storage expansion boxes. In this case, uh, you can put two U, uh, four U, uh, as well as our up and coming uh, four U um, top loader, 60 bay and 90 bays, and provide that storage expansion boxes to enhance customers' uh, TCO in order to uh, put as much uh, as many spindle disks or flash disks as possible to increase that TCO uh, figures. So the idea is very simple. You, we have two um, controllers that the head node, storage head node controllers controls all the storage expansion This is in the expansion platform to control uh, all the spindle disks. And this gives you um, maximum CapEx and uh, TCO Say, uh, say, uh, cost saving reductions. Um, on the um, up, uh, scaled up applications, um, I want to briefly mention as the protocol and the um, the features that we support. We support 10 gig, 25 gig E, 40 gig iSCSI, as well as the file NFS support, NFS V version 4 support, and Microsoft CIFS and SMB version 3. Features wise, um, first and foremost are the dual active active cluster, meaning anyone, any one of these head, head nodes goes down, the standby will pick up immediately. This vertical application supports 1 to 10 petabyte, very optimized for that application. Anything beyond that, uh, we should consider the next one I will talk about. It's called self scale out. In terms of the uh, RAID redundancy, this Nexenter Supermicro uh, solution supports uh, Z1, Z2, C3. Z1, C2, C C3 refers to the storage protection. Z1 protects one drive failure. Z2 protects two drive failures simultaneously. Z3 is less common, it provides three drives fail all at once. So um, there's a different level of hard drive failure product, uh, protection depending on uh, how much sacrifice customers are willing to give in order to increase their protections. On the feature wise, it supports uh, web replications, um, cloning and snapshots. In terms of integration, uh, this uh, Vertical uh, scale up application are very uh, well tested in with VMware, Horizon, OpenStack, as well as vCenters. Pocket uses cases are in mostly uh, generic file sharing, uh, directories uh, on the back end of hybrid clouds, high performance NFS applications, business continuity, hospitals, in telcos, and some. Uh, Nearline archiving for scalable NFS applications. In terms of um, what we have certified so far with this scale up applications, uh, we have two models. We have the embedded appliance model, meaning the software, the hardware, the storage are all pre installed. Everything's embedded in one single boxes before we ship out from the factory here in Su at Supermicro. We have the first, we have the 2U2 node with storage, with compute, with networking, with, soft, with software, with licensing, we support all embedded in one 2U platform. Next one, we have the 4U SBB with higher uh, storage uh, capacity, supporting three and a half inch spindle drives, if uh, customers one plus one redundancy, all the supports we need. On your left, we have the reference architecture, which means we have the basic two head node storage controllers, and then customer can um, choose the expansion for you to you boxes to in, to adjust to their storage needs. So uh, that's why we call reference architecture. 
So these 2U and 4U form factors are available to choose depends on customer's application and their storage needs. And all of these are pre-configured in our factory with licenses from DDN Accenture before we ship up. Customers received uh, these uh, SKUs, power them up, call as our professional services, and this is turn on the license for them. Next slide, I want to talk about the storage expansion boxes I mentioned in the two slides ago. Uh, these are the um, storage expansion boxes for you, mostly for you and to you, that we have certified jointly with Accenture and DDN and Supermicro together. We sell them at 60 bay top low, 90 bay top low, 44 bay front low and back low, and 24 bays. And these are fully certified with Supermicro providing support. The one that on the right are the Gen 2 top low 60 bay, which will be certifying very soon uh, with the, this uh, Accenture DDN Supermicro scale up solutions. Now, I also want to bring everyone's attention that in, in addition to rotating this, we also support all flash AFS, all flash array with the scale up storage appliance approach. We also have hybrid model, meaning part SSD, part spindle drive. And, uh, the most cost effective way is a rotational disk or hard drive uh, scheme. So it really depends on customer's needs. Uh, the ecosystem support, we support Windows, Linux, VMware, um, multi-tenancy, vCenter, OpenStack, Hyper-V, and Docker volumes. Next slide, I'm going to talk about the success story. How we leverage this um, scale-up architecture, in what industry we, are, uh, we have deployed so far. First one I want to talk about is the health, healthcare industry. By far, a lot of hospitals we have worked with, uh, healthcare industry, have deployed a lot of uh, small parts, scale-up vertical uh, storage uh, implementations. Hospitals, logistics, supply chain management, healthcare management, hospitals, imaging. So the next one I want to mention about is uh, our successful win in Australian market. We have a lot of uh, wins in uh, global ITs in Australia on their consulting services and their business processes. Third one I want to mention is the um, educational and school industries in U.S. and also in uh, around the world academic institutions. They buy these smaller parts of uh, scale-up storage boxes to s support their HPC applications, their, um, their school work, their teaching and learning services powered by um, the storage services. Government sector is also uh, popular. We have uh, quite a bit of wins in aerospace, defense industry, airplane designs, security, and the telco side we had uh, success in the telco data centers, the telco consulting services, their business processes services. The next one is the traditional information technology. Um, we, sub we do a lot of uh, quite a bit of deals with IBM Global Services, um, AFNET, and, and Tata Consulting Services. Um, this slide tells um, everyone about the, the, the spread and the breadth of the sectors this uh, vertical scale-up architecture has been uh, successful in, in terms of deployment with Supermicro. We have additional technology hosting, GoDaddy, um, um, scale matrix, light aware, that type of uh, um, hosting infrastructure, colo infrastructure. Then we have the traditional educational research universities, PCs, um, genomics in university application, and traditional governments like mentioned here, Lockheed Martins, you know, government agencies, and in the telco we have you know Vodafone, we have China Unicom, we have A by A, we have a Telecom Luxembourg, healthcare uh, very popular with hospitals. 
The next one I want to mention uh, is our scale out storage solution ba based on our 2U and the 4U uh, storage boxes. Uh, top loader is very popular in uh, top loading 4U are very popular in SEP. SEP is basically a concatenation of multiple physical unit storage boxes into one logical storage platform. You're basically using networking technology to uh, concatenate multiple physical units into one serving storage boxes to serve customers' needs. So it supports uh, file applications, block application, and mostly important is the object store. So in this case, uh, we are offering Supermicro, which to say Ceph, in our traditional Gen 1 60, uh, 60-bay top loaders. And our Gen 2 up and coming 60-bay and 90-bay top loader we will be also working on uh, providing Ceph uh, solutions to uh, enhance the, the few replaceable unit feature and a lot of enhanced mechanical feature on our Gen 1 boxes. So, um, like I mentioned, so um, the software defined storage, in this case, Ceph, uh, open source, based on open source technology. It supports a replication. It supports a lot of erasure coding to increase the storage efficiency. It's, it distinguished from this, uh, the scale up, it, it supports object store. It supports block, file, and object store, and and gives customer the the highest TCO if customers want to support object store. But our proprietary um, architecture uh, on the scale upside are mostly HA one plus one with two head head nodes. Storage controllers control a bunch of this. So that was the, our next sentence example. So um, the next slide um, it's an example what we have deployed a single part three petabyte of scale out deployments recently in a telco fashion. It as you can see, it, it has basic Ceph ingredient. It has the administrative node, it has the monitor node, it has the gateway node. And then the OSD are the, where the storage are stored, called o storage node. So we um, these are the basic building block of a large-scale de deployment of scale-out deployments with minimum requirements of administrative node, Three monitor node and four uh, gateway nodes. The next slide uh, is a, a flat out topology tells uh, everyone that how are things connected. On your left side, you get IPMI Supermicro asset management space managing all our assets. On the on the bottom side, uh, OSD node. That's where the physical storage are stored. And the top one are the gateway nodes that are uh, where the management overhead, the monitoring overhead, and administrative overhead, managing all these storage uh, top loaded boxes we have deployed. On the right side are the data networking. These are the networking that allows all the boxes talk to each other into one cohesive unit. So uh, protocol, we support uh, 100G, 100G QSFP as well as traditional uh, cost-effective 25G copper. And thank you very much. The next I want to pass uh, uh, um, the ball to uh, Randy, who is going to talk about how to combine the advantages of scale-up storage with a scale-out storage in one single instance. Thank you very much. So let's talk a little bit about parallel file systems and some of the advantages that uh, Super Micro can deliver with parallel file systems. So parallel file systems typically are for high performance computing environments. One of the things that Super Micro can bring to the table is embedded metadata servers and embedded file server nodes. This can be key especially in large data centers where air conditioning, floor space, things of that nature are really short on, on supply. Using software-defined high availability storage architecture uh, is uh, one of the ways that uh, we can bring high-performance computing and file system performance together. 
mature, fully tested and validated reference architectures can make for building block architectures and delivery to uh, predictable performance scaling levels that uh, you really need in that type of an environment. High density building blocks for metadata with 24 drives shared between two embedded servers or 60 slot, 90 slot, three and a half inch uh, storage bridge bay architectures are capable of delivering high performance while providing highly available systems for these high performance file systems. These reference architectures include the networking, the rack integration, and hardware support services that you get with Supermicro. Examples of some of the parallel file systems that I'm uh, referring to are BGFS and Lustre. Here we have a uh, current reference architecture using external servers, if you will. On the left, you can see the metadata servers, two external servers uh, with a dual initiated cross cabled uh, JBOD to 24 uh, SAS drives. This works well today. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see a similar architecture using the exact same file servers. Now these can be customized clearly adding more memory or less memory or bigger CPU or less CPU as we need. And these are cross-cabled in a dual initiated fashion to a 45, a 60, or a 90 slot JBOD, whichever is required to deliver the performance and or the capacity required in an RFP or by the customer. And on the top end, you can see the high-speed network. Classically speaking, we're dealing with 100 gigabit networks here, either Ethernet or InfiniBand for the most part. And this will be moving in the next generation to 200 gigabit Ethernet and InfiniBand. So let's look at uh, the future reference architecture here. At the very top, you can see the high-speed network again. And as I mentioned previously, 200 gigabit both for Ethernet and InfiniBand will become the standard. But underneath that, you can see a different hardware approach with embedded metadata servers and embedded file servers all inside of the same system or sheet metal. On the left-hand side, the met metadata server is our current uh, storage bridge bay, all NVMe uh, servers, two servers attached dual ported the 24 NVMe drives providing superior IOP performance for metadata operations. On the right hand side, you can see two iterations, both with two dual node uh, storage bridge based servers attached to either a 60 or a 90 slot server, and then an attachment to a JBOD is also possible, so you can get up to 180 drives, three and a half inch drives, behind each pair of storage bridge based servers to provide a highly available parallel file system environment. And with the advent in the very near future of 18 terabyte drives, you can get quite a bit of uh, capacity in 180 drives as well. So these are, this is the future, it's the near future. This is something that we're looking at having available in the uh, last quarter, calendar quarter of 2020. So let's go over some of the highlights, some of the key features of both of these products as we move forward. Today, on the left-hand side, you'll see the dual node NVMe storage bridge bay configuration. Highly available to you, two nodes, dual, dual initiated to uh, 24 NVMe drives, providing superior performance, IOP performance needed for uh, all of the parallel file system metadata operations. And you can see the different capabilities that we have there, but we have enough uh, PCI slots there to provide up to 800 gigabits of, uh, of bandwidth with the uh, next gen product, 400 gigabits today. On the right hand side is the new storage bridge bay, uh, top loading 90 slot, or 60 slot, uh, three and a half inch drive SAS, so you can get 120 drives or 180 drives with a add-on uh, JBOD as well, all by 16 attached 
PCI Gen 6, uh, I-16, uh, all attached to the JBOD to get the performance both out of the dual node uh, solution as well as the JBOD to uh, push performance levels uh, where they've never really been before. So we uh, feel very strongly that these products are going to be able to drive parallel file system performance and capacity for those customers seeking uh, those types of systems in the future. And with that, I'll turn things back over to Vic. Thank you. Oh, well, thanks, Randy. Uh, welcome back, the experts, um, Lawrence, Lawrence, and uh, Randy. Uh, back to. Uh, the session for some panel discussion. Um, we have some questions from uh, the audience and uh, hopefully you guys can um, elaborate and answer these questions. So are you guys ready? Absolutely. Yes. Cool. Um, so uh, let, great, great, great. Um, let's start with Randy. Um, Randy, one of the things that you uh, showcase there is in the SBB architecture where there are a lot of uh, 60 and 90 base system, uh, 90 base storage uh, units attached to it. Um, uh, how do people use it? I mean, do we need to fully populate all these, uh, um, uh, I would say, storage base, or uh, uh, how the performance will be impacted? So you don't need to fill every slot, but if you don't, you need to be concerned potentially about uh, saturating the uh, performance of the uh, server itself. So if it's half populated, for example, there's no way that you're going to be able to push uh, saturation levels of what the box can actually provide. So it's a matter of uh, putting enough drives in it to drive the performance and get the capacity that you need. Okay, great. Um, so um, one other question I see here is that um, the hybrid uh, drive ports that we are using in the storage platforms, um, can one be using a SAS drive instead of uh, NVMe or uh, mix the SAS and NVMe drives? So Lawrence, uh, you, perhaps you can answer that. Um, the old fresh NVMe drive bay uh, currently is for the two platform. I think that's the hybrid one, the two form factor. But the top loading one is not the uh, hybrid one at this moment. Yeah, I agree. So, um, so in it, because the name of the hybrid, one should be able to put either uh, NVMe or uh, SAS drives depending on their application, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Um, another thing that I see here is that um, when people are using it for a safe solution, um, how do they? know to how to size it what will be the um, actual net usage space compared to the raw space uh, Lawrence lamb perhaps you can allude to that sure so so the, the the raw capacity versus the actual usable uh self storage spaces has a uh, um pretty um fixed ratio it's about uh mm. 70 to 30 percent so if you have 80 uh, 100 percent of raw storage usually the usable space uh, varies between 70 percent to 75 percent so and so nice. michael will help you customize it so you get the maximum efficiency and optimization and so that's why we've got all these recipes from three petabyte part six petabyte part 12 petabyte part we help you uh maximize efficiencies on these raw storage uh, uh, capacities. Okay, great, great. Um, Randy, this is perhaps for you. Um, when we have the systems with uh, dual storage controller, um, how do they get the high availability in that? Good question. So the uh, embedded servers are dual initiated cable to the drives themselves. So. The hardware has the capability, but you need software to be able to move the drives from one server to the other. Uh, so software is required to complete the failover, uh, typically speaking in a parallel file system environment. Examples for being able to do that would be something like Pacemaker or Corosync can be used with uh, most of the parallel file systems available today to do so. 
I see. So um, our systems, we have actually qualified with this software in order to provide the high availability. Yes. So uh, it's a matter of which uh, parallel file system do you want. We have reference architectures. And uh, to enable the high availability features, you can use uh, tools such as what I mentioned prior to do so. I see. I see. Um, uh, Lawrence, Lam Lawrence Liang, perhaps. Um, so you have uh, 60, 45, 60, and 90 bay J bars, and um, you also provide high availability um, because of the internal cabling and uh, cabling arm uh, configuration. So uh, do people need to rush when things were to fail? Because the drives are going to fail at a time. How much time people do have to service this? I mean, do they have to have fast hands or what? Yeah, so we have done the demo test uh, with the, the real system, with the 90 bay uh, system. Uh, when we pull out the drawer to try to uh, check the, the, the ambient, uh, the temperatures while we test. So we, we run in on the very um, uh, harsh environment, which is uh, the systems running uh, full speed and a 205 CPU at the, the moment. So the system can sustain up to 20 minutes so the system can stay cool and very healthy uh, environment status. I see. 20 minutes for service on the drive. So it is because of the thermal optimization and how you design that right. uh, facilitates and, uh, extended period of time. And also the, the thermal cooling uh, design. So make that possible. I think while well, the competitors only can support up to three to five minutes, but our system can sustain for up to 20 minutes excellent, for the service excellent. amount of time. Yeah. So Randy, I see one more question here. Uh, perhaps you answered that may want to repeat. Uh, the question is, uh, which type of software required for high availability? So with the parallel file system, it's whichever one you choose. Uh, like I said, Luster or GPF, uh, BGFS are definitely two of them. Uh, Spectrum Scale, of course, is another. Um, you can utilize Corosync or Pacemaker for the failover to uh, initiate, to uh, move services from one uh, embedded node to the other. I see. OK. Um, one more question I see here is, uh, so uh, Lawrence Lam, um, one of the things that uh, recently people are uh, looking at is um, uh, an Intel versus AMD. So. Uh, is there anything that people should be concerned about in using uh, one versus the other uh, in terms of the software solutions that you mentioned? Uh, actually, the answer is no. We, we have certified both Intel uh, platform as well as AMD platform. So the uh, latest AMD platform offer advantages in terms of um, uh, has a large number of uh, PCIe lanes as well as more cores. So that, that give you a, a slightly higher density in terms of the VMs and OSD supports on drives. So. I see, I see. Um, so um, Lawrence Liang, I think you mentioned something about, you know, how long uh, the chassis can be kept open while still stay operational, like 20 minutes uh, to swap the parts. Um, right. I have a question on that um, in terms of, uh, in terms of its uh, use in the actual um, scenario, uh, what kind of, uh, uh, I would say, the CPU and uh, drives are supported and how hot can it run uh, while you are supporting all these uh, additional functionality? Yes, um, actually, when we test our system, the 90 bay system, especially it's on the Duno, which we can uh, put a 205, the high risk, the wattage CPUs in the world, which is 205 watt CPUs, we have a total of four CPU in the two nodes. So the system running at very strict condition and the hardware temperatures are only uh, go, the worst case, the hardware is only go up to 41 degrees C, while this, uh, the hardware uh, spec is, can go up to 60 degree. We still have plenty of the room um, to have the system keep cool and, and, and running. Okay, okay, great. So uh, again, gets back to the thermal design. Um, Lawrence Lam, I think uh, 
The question uh, is, uh, again, in terms of using uh, different CPUs, because when we're talking about uh, storage solution, uh, it's all about the storage performance, but not necessarily the back end which CPU you use. Uh, at the same time, um, you know, Supermicro bringing uh, the latest in the uh, processor technology into platforms, whether it is uh, the current and even upcoming uh, new processors from both Intel and AMD. Um, how do you help uh, the customers to choose the right uh, processor that goes along with uh, the storage to provide the right solution? So um, to choosing the right CPU really depends on customers' workload and what customers expecting in terms of the benchmarking do uh, they expect to do. So uh, Supermicro Solution Team will help them, uh, first of all, design the, uh, the backbone, the skeleton of the storage architecture, and then we will help them to run the benchmark. Make sure the benchmark, uh, uh, collaborate with them on the benchmark numbers and tune the benchmark numbers. Okay, so they they can just go to you for like a one-stop shop uh, in terms of helping them size the platform, right? Yes. Okay, okay. So, um, Randy, I think the other one is about the uh, scalable storage. So, when you talk about scalable storage, how much can it scale with SBB? What's the limit? So, really, there is no limit. Uh, the limit would be based on how large a uh, file system can get. Uh, typically speaking, most of the parallel file systems today are measured into the tens of exabytes. So many chassis, many racks of these chassis can all be strung together into very large uh, parallel file systems with a single namespace. Okay, okay. So Lawrence Liang, I see one more question here. How many JBots can connect with the main storage via storage expansion or use additional external RAID or HBA controller to expand the storage? Yeah, so in our design, actually, we um, design for up to um, three, suggest for three JBus cascading. But usually we have the multiple hosts, uh, we have um, uh, many PCX expansion. Uh, so we will suggest parallelly connecting with multiple uh, controller HBA connecting to the each JBA. So the one layer will be suggest. So we can have multiple JBA with the, um, the controller correct, uh, directly connected, not just doing the cascading because the performance will a uh, little bit drop on the, the very late. Uh, the, 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 the last uh, JBA will have the performance drop. So we don't recommend doing uh, too many cascading layer. So up to three will be suggested. Okay. Okay. So it's more for the performance reasons, but right. not necessarily the scalability yeah. aspect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, either it's for uh, Lawrence Lamb or Randy, uh, this question, are the storage servers with dual servers active, active with the I think uh, Vic might have dropped. I think Vic drops off. So. I think the question you, is asking for uh, the server can access the same device um, through sp Spectrum. I think fix back on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you repeat the question again? Yes. Um, so basically, um, you know, sorry for this the internet uh, issue, but the question is. Um, are the storage servers with the dual servers active active with the servers? Um, example, both servers can access the same drives. For example, Spectrum Scale can have multiple servers accessing the same drives. Do these solutions support this without uh, any hardware restrictions uh, stopping on this occurring? Randy, you want to take a crack first? Sure. So the servers are active active. There is nothing in the hardware that stops you from doing a dual initiated access to the SAS drives. The key here is you have to have SAS drives. Uh, SATA drives will not work in this environment, but SAS drives will. You can access uh, all the drives from both, both servers simultaneously. There is no issues with that. The hardware will not prevent you from doing that. Uh, the types of things that prevent you from doing it are multipath. 
inside of Linux. If you turn multipath off, you have whatever the environment is you want to build, you have access to it. I do this kind of thing uh, myself. Um, I typically split the drives when there's no failure between both servers to have symmetric access from only one server at a time, but there's no reason why you couldn't access from both servers uh, the drives at the same time. Uh, you certainly can fail over, uh, you know, if a uh, server fails and a single server would have access to all of them at once. But yeah, there's nothing in the hardware that'll stop it, just the software and the operating system. Great, great, thank you. Um, so um, as we are coming close to the top of the hour, um, we'll probably um, ask each of you, uh, what what should be um, the you know parting thoughts from each of you uh, in terms of uh, either a solution or the hardware, uh, or as something that, um, you know, anything that you want to share with the audience. Uh, perhaps start with uh, Lawrence Liang. I think um, the new top dose storage system has some very um, great features and also have a, a very large enhancements on the hardware design, and no matters on the use of usability, also on the performance. So we are um, push our product to the limit and we provide the greatest and baddest, uh the product to the, uh, the the customer. I see. Great. Um, actually, there's one more question came. Um, it says, uh, "What about having multiple access to NVMe drives?" So, with the uh, 24 slot uh, SBB, uh, where you have uh, dual servers, dual attached to dual ported NVMe drives, you absolutely can do the exact same thing with SAS drives. Uh, you can have access from both servers simultaneously, where you can split them and, and access uh, half the drives from one and half the drives from the other. Uh, that works absolutely fine. I've done a lot of benchmarking with this scenario, and it works just fine. Great, great. Um, Lawrence Lamb, um, can we mix SATA and SAS on the same storage for example, SATA for operating system and SAS for storage. Uh, definitely, yeah. So, so it's very common people want, want to use a low access frequency SATA drive as a as a boot uh, as, a, as a mirror the boot uh, sector, and then use the robust SAS protocol drive as a main store. So it's very common to, for people to do that. I see. Okay. Um, so, uh, again, uh, at this point, uh, probably we are going to uh, wrap this uh, session up. I like to thank all of uh, you um, and the audience for, uh, you know, t basically attending this uh, storage uh, uh, summit, this panel discussion as well. Um, all these uh, panelists will also be available uh, in the networking lounge, and uh, you can actually go uh, you know, on the same uh, page where you have uh, access this uh, link. You can uh, see the link for the networking lounge. Uh, you can ask questions there and uh, we look forward to hearing more from you. Uh, we'll be more than excited to answer any of the questions that you may have. Thank you.